Hello! This just arrived in the mail. It is a huge package from Canada from a lovely viewer who has sent me some art supplies and I just cannot wait to open this. Let's get into it! I'm always astounded at people's generosity when they send me things and the time it takes to package all this up, the cost of sending it. I am so thankful and grateful for this. Thank you very much to Joanne who sent this to me. It took something like 12 weeks to get here, would you believe? It was forever and we thought the thing had been lost, but no, it showed up. Okay, let's get it open. All lovingly wrapped in bubble wrap. Gosh, there's quite a few things in here by the looks of it. A lovely letter. I tend to read these off camera. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to open first. Let's take a look at this. Oh, that's really pretty. Oh, I love that. That will be perfect in summer here. What a pretty fan. I shall put that to one side. A very shiny notebook thing and another little package here oh and one more thing as well it looks like okay that's everything out of the box let's take a closer look ah oh, it's got full of things in here my goodness it's like a treasure trove I keep pulling things out it looks like there might be some information on the paints or something that are in here so I will come back to this one Let's open the packages. Oh wow, that's a nice case. And it has been very securely taped down, so I'm going to have to spend a bit of time opening that, I think. And I'll just open the box as well. Oh my gosh, what have you made for me? <laughs> oh goodness, it looks like it's all homemade. Okay, I think I'm going to have to do some peeling with scissors here to cut all of the tape off. I'll be right back. I have done some peeling and now everything is ready to open, hopefully. So this looks like it's been reused, which is such a good idea, just recycling old packaging. I'm kind of curious now about an Artex portable bamboo watercolour palette. I might have to look that up. But it looks like she's poured individual pots of paint for me. And there's some interesting looking ones in here. I've got a piece of paper which she's written all the names of everything out, so we'll take a look at that. Oh my gosh, there's heaps more in here too. I think these ones are gouache. Oh look at that one's really dried in transit. It's been stuck in the postal service for so long, it's ridiculous. So hopefully I can reactivate them with water, we'll see how we go. And it looks like we've got some watercolours and some gouache. I included a watercolour I did of a dragonfly. Its meaning is universal. I hope it makes you smile. Enjoy the colours. Wow, let's check it out in here. I think I actually found it in this one. So I looked through and look at this beautiful dragonfly painting. That's gorgeous. Thank you so much for sending me that. I love to receive art from viewers. It's just the most amazing thing. I love it. I'm going to have to find somewhere safe to keep this. Also inside is a nice little note here and she made me some wonderful swatch cards of everything which is really great I'm going to have to sit through and figure these out because I'm so confused I'm so overwhelmed by paint ah. <laughs> and there was a couple of other things there is also in here a little clip which has something on it that's been stuck on there for a few months you can tell well I shall have to hang that up I like that a Canadian flag sticker and paints. Great. I shall have to put something in here for sure. So I shall pop this to one side and then I will figure out these paints. There we go. The leaf is hanging up with a few other little treasures I have just by my desk. This is off my studio light. Here we go. I've sorted myself out. These ones are watercolours and they are a mix of M. Graham's and Daniel Smith's. And then over here we have some gouache and I'm pretty sure these are Windsor and Newton so I'm pretty sure that they will reactivate with water which is a good thing <laughs> because a couple of them have dried out in transit this is the key with all of the colors on and I was just reading through some of her letter here she says I swatched the watercolours and gouache to give you a quick view immediately. I used 100% cotton paper. The watercolour painting I sent you has significant meaning for native people. I'm Cree and the dragonfly when you see one, especially if you see them often, which I do, is a loved one in spirit telling you 
or showing you that they're still beside you. So that's really beautiful. I'm so glad that this has such a significant meaning and it's really lovely that you've sent this to me. I'm going to keep this as a real treasure. She also said, I included a fan, my metaphor for you because she's a fan of my channel. <laughs> that's pretty funny. I can't wait to test these out. I think I'll do my own swatches as well, but this is really handy and I should actually make some of these things myself. Wouldn't it just be easier to have all swatches in a nice little card thing like this that you can hang up somewhere? It keeps them all together and organized. I'm going to put them to one side and I will make another little chart with these and I will definitely have to try some artworks out. Look at that, everything fits beautifully in here and I even tried to retain as much washi tape as possible. I might find a use for this as well. well here are the different gouaches. These are all Winsor & Newton and I really hope they're going to reactivate in water because this one has completely dried out. This one's getting there. The others look relatively okay maybe a little bit dry but hopefully they shall reactivate. I think I might actually drip some water into this one because it is just so completely desiccated and we'll let that soak there for a bit. Hopefully that will come back to life. Well it looks like it's starting to reactivate. This is what I found with my experience with gouache and why it's actually better to use them straight from tube when you can because a lot of them when they dry just go completely rock solid and it's really hard to reactivate them but this is slowly coming back to life so I'll let that sit for a while and we'll hopefully be able to at least swatch it out a bit. I think I'll do some swatching in my Etcher sketchbook which has got 100% cotton paper. I have already ruled up a chart for the Windsor & Newton gouache and I'll do a painting over here. Thank the Lord it's regular gouache and not acrylic gouache because at least it was able to reactivate with water. Phew! I would have felt so bad if it was acrylic gouache because once that dries it does not reactivate and that would have been the end of it. But as it was I was able to re-wet everything and the colours are pretty beautiful. I have to say I really like this palette. The Windsor and Newton gouache is definitely of a really high quality and there was really good opacity in most of the colours. Not the primary red though, that one is still very transparent. Also because I just could not get it to reactivate very well. It had fully dried and it's really difficult. The blue was still wet in the pot though. That was one that actually stayed nice and juicy. I think the green was a little bit as well. So there's a little bit of advice if you do want to send art supplies to your favorite YouTubers that generally it's better if they're in the tube even if it's a partial tube because it will stay a lot more airtight and the paints will stay wet. I would advise doing this especially for anything that's got acrylic in it. Not so bad for watercolors and gouache that will be wet. They're okay in pans. Yeah solid set of colors here. All of them are really pretty. I think the black and the white are particularly opaque. Also this green is showing quite a lot of opacity. The brown, the yellow and these two, the blue and the red are a bit more transparent. But I think if you mixed in these with some white it would really increase their opacity. So I will have to come up with an artwork here. I'll need to think about what to do with this colour palette. I wanted to paint something nice and bright with these colors considering they are so vibrant and I saw this picture of a chameleon which I thought would be a fun drawing to do so I'm just sketching it out here. It's turned out quite cartoonish but I actually quite like it and I was just getting in some of the general areas of where the markings are. I've never made a chameleon art before so to begin with it was a slight disaster when it came to painting but what I was doing was trying to get the color colors on there fairly lightly so then I can build up layers over the top. With gouache you can do that quite easily because it does have that opacity to it and so it will layer on top of each other nicely. This is a lot more difficult to do with transparent watercolors which is why I'm really liking gouache for this. It's a lot more like painting with an acrylic paint where you can layer over the top. But it was looking very patchy to begin with. The struggle I was having is because the gouache had dried for the most part when I reactivate it with water it does dilute it quite a lot and therefore it goes a lot more transparent. So I've had more luck using gouache straight from tube when the paint is wet. But of course in this situation it must have gone around the world a few times before it arrived in Australia and possibly sat in customs for a month or two. So I just worked around it in the end. 
But to begin with, right around this point, I'm just looking at it going, oh dear, what am I going to do to fix this? Because if you've ever seen chameleons, they have really dotty scales. And so what I started doing was dotting on the paint with a wooden stick. When all else fails, poke it with the stick, am I right? <laughs> but I eventually upgraded to a more sophisticated dotting tool, and that worked out a bit better than the stick, which just was really hard to use. So I spent a long time dotting this picture, but I am really happy with how it came out, and I also hope you like the background, because I wasn't too sure what to do with that, so I kind of went matchy-matchy with the colours, and you'll see what happens there. Well, this is not at all what I intended to do with the gouache, but this is what I ended up with, and I'm actually pretty happy with it. I quite like the dots in the background, I think it just adds something to it, and I do like how the chameleon turned out. At one point I thought it wasn't going to work at all, and I was freaking out, going, ah, oh, I'm going to have to do something else, but no, it's actually come out really well, and I really like the gouache dots all over it. I think it's quite cute, and this was quite fun once I got the hang of doing it. So I call this one a success. I really like the Windsor and Newton gouache. It's beautiful and bright. I may have to consider getting some tubes down the line. And now to swatch out all of the watercolours. All of the colours that Joanne sent to me are ones that I don't have, which is fantastic. And I remembered at the last minute to put some water down before painting over the top so we can see them disperse. As always, nickel as a yellow is such a pretty colour. I quite like the Azo green as well. Maybe not quite as much as the Azo yellow, but they are both very lovely and they just run across the page gorgeously. I forgot to alternate the colours here, so I'm getting paint everywhere. They just run like crazy on this paper. But this cobalt blue is really beautiful. I love this colour. It is one I had considered for my original palette, but cobalts are always on the pricier side, so I think I went with the cheaper version. The Prussian blue is beautiful, I love that one. Such a rich deep blue. And then going on to ultramarine pink, this was another one that I wasn't sure if I wanted. It's quite a pretty colour though, it's more of a purple colour rather than pink, but it's kind of similar to Potter's pink with that muted granulated feel. Just a little more purple though. And this mineral violet, wow it's gorgeous, I adore this one. Easily my favourite in the whole lot, I think. <laughs> and then moving on to the three Daniel Smiths. The first one is Naphthamide Maroon, which is one I'd had on my wish list for a while, and I definitely wanted after painting it out on this swatch. It's beautiful, I love it. Lunar Earth, I think it's a Primatech colour. It's really granulating. It's a pretty brown. I'm not sure if I would add this as a tube to my collection, but I do like it nonetheless. And last is Quinacridone Pink, also really bright. I have a few other colours which are similar, but I do like this. And these are some lovely colours. Look at that granulation on that mineral violet, it's crazy. Let me lift that up so we can see it a bit closer. That is so cool. And also on the Lunar Earth, that's gone really granulating as well. Naphthamide Maroon a little bit, and that Quinacridone Pink is super bright. They're all beautiful colours. 
Oh gosh, it took me a while to think of an artwork to make with these colours. I was just drawing a blank, but now I've started drawing an actual picture. Hooray! I saw this kind of sunset photo with the lighthouse in it and rocks in the front, a bit of water. It just made me think that these colours would work really well for that. So it's not exactly the same as the colours in the photograph, but I just kind of made it up as I went along a bit. I think it actually turned out really well and I just love these paints. They're so beautiful. If you saw my recent Kmart art supply videos, you would know that I really liked their $3 set of watercolors because they are really decent quality, but they are nothing compared to these gorgeous, gorgeous paints. Oh my lord, I always forget just how amazing they are until I use them again and oh, they're just so wonderful. Their dispersion, their granulation, their intensity, there is just nothing that can beat professional paints like these and both M. Graham and Daniel Smith have excellent quality paints. I highly recommend both brands. So I started off fairly lightly and worked my way up with the colour because it is nice to build up that intensity with using layers. Glazing like this also does create a lot more luminosity in the paints. But I very nearly stuffed it up here because I decided the sky needed some Prussian blue and that just ran everywhere all over the lighthouse and into the water. So fortunately it was still wet and I was able to dab it off and I'm just going over it again later so I fixed up any little errors there. I used the naphthamide maroon a lot in the front, also some of the lunar earth and the mineral violet together along with nickel as a yellow just to create those beautiful light reflections and I'm really happy with how this painting turned out. I'm very thankful to Joanne for sending me these. I know how expensive these paints are and so for someone to post me some is always such a huge honour. I've linked Joanne's Instagram with her permission in the description below if you want to check out her page. She has some really cute artwork. She does a lot of shoes and handbags and some of them are so adorable. I'm sure she would really appreciate some new followers. And I just want to send out a big thank you to everyone who watches my videos because I really appreciate your views and your comments. Without you, I would be nothing. So all of this is on you. You're the best. I'm quite happy with how this one turned out. I did consider putting on some white highlights, but I think I might just leave well enough alone for now. I just really wanted to use the watercolours on their own without adding anything else. I didn't use quite all of them. I used nickel as a yellow, Prussian blue, mineral violet, and these three as well. I did not get to use the cobalt blue as a green or ultramarine pink. I probably could have added them in, but I didn't really want to wreck the painting by just putting too much and making a total mess. I think the colours worked really well together though, the ones that I used, and I love the granulation. These are so beautiful and I am so happy to have them in my collection. I've actually been scraping pots out on the side and sticking them into half pens because the M. Graham paints are still actually quite tacky and two of these ones were really juicy still so they were really easy to scoop out. I have made such a mess and I've got a few more to do. <laughs> Look at these. I'll probably keep them and use up the paint in those as well but I just thought it would be easier to put them into half pens so I can include them in my larger sets. So that's all I've got for today. I've got this painting with the beautiful watercolours and also the gouache painting which is much brighter and has a lot more of a primary colour look to it but I really like the difference between this it's really super bright and then going back to the watercolour painting it's a lot warmer and more muted so it was fun using both palettes. 
Thank you so much to Joanne for sending these to me. I've had a great time with them. I really love the colours and I will definitely be adding some of these to my collection permanently. I think I'm going to have to get that mineral violet. It's absolutely stunning. I really love the naphthamide maroon as well. Those two I think are my favourite, although that Prussian's gorgeous and oh, they're all beautiful. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. It was really fun opening mystery mail. And if you want to send me something, don't forget I've got a P.O. box in the description below just be aware that if you're sending from the northern hemisphere it might take a few months to get here thank you all very much for watching if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button and i will see you all again really soon in my next video take care out there swatch you later bye